Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor. Welcome back to another Gen 2 in Review. Today I'm going to be talking about multi-booting your Linux operating systems if you ever wanted to have multiple Linux OS's utilizing the same system as your Gen 2 partition. Now the first thing that you're going to do, or I'm going to review first with you, is how I have mine set up, and then we'll look at the Grub configuration, and you'll see just how easy it really is. I have two hard drives in this laptop. If you do an fdisk-l slash dev slash sta, this is the initial hard drive that actually came with the system. It has Windows 7. Everything is pretty much just stock. Um, it's professional because personally I think Home Edition of anything Microsoft have ever, has ever done is just absolute rubbish. So I always make sure to have at least a professional. Inside of my NTFS Win 7 Professional, I pretty much just use it for... You know, people say, are you 100% Linux? And I'll say I'm 99.99999% Linux. There's always that 0.0001% of something that because of a developer, an application, something by design that just will not work within Linux. And you have to be able to go into a Windows profile to, to either install a piece of software to configure something or it might be a website with proprietary software. Uh, the library system, for instance, has some really great online tools. Unfortunately, there for a lot of years, you could only access those tools through Windows. And Silverlight, for instance, is a good example of a lot of sites that have utilized Silverlight. And it's kind of hosed you in any type of Linux until recently. Now they've fixed a lot of that stuff. I mean, shoot, nowadays you can actually get Netflix. As you can see right here, you know, Netflix now runs in Linux and I can make it run full screen, beautiful and all that. Don't have to go into Windows. So, that, you know, slowly but surely we're getting to a point where we don't need that. But, you know, as you see here, I've got my SDA 1, 2, 3, 4, which is all Linux. Or not Linux, I'm sorry, Windows. I left it that way. I didn't want to mess with it because when Windows 7 came out they actually changed something and it might have been also in Vista but it used to be you just had one partition that had everything and now they've got all of these different partitions when I first started messing around with this system three or four years ago when I got it I didn't want to mess up anything so I just said you know what we'll just leave the first hard drive as it is and not touch it we'll install a second hard drive and if we do another F disk and look at SDB you'll see that I have my swap partition here and then SDB 2, 3, and 4 are all just Linux partitions they're all formatted right now EXT4 and when we look at grub then that will kind of explain a little bit more so what I've done here and I think I've said this on a couple part or a couple different videos is SDB1 is my primary partition. It's my biggest partition. It's what I have my main Gen 2 on. SDB2, or I should say SDB2. That was, you know, SB, SDB1 is, of course, my swap. SDB3 is what eventually will become my package distribution, something like, like Debian or Arch, something that's stable something you can easily throw on there wipe it reinstall I never keep data on my hard drives I always keep them on my local servers you know that way if anything ever goes wrong with the OS I can just wipe it restart and I'm not worrying about data and then of course in the fourth partition here uh, that is my guest OS now of course in Gen 2 as it goes through the handbook when you get towards the end you can either decide whether or not you want to use Lilo for Linux loader or Grub uh, which is the grand something unified bootloader I believe and 
I'm sure someone's going to ding me for not knowing exactly what that stands for. I don't like grub tooths, but I'm, I'm also very glad that when you just emerge grub within Linux, that it actually installs, I think, version 1 dot something. We'll find out here in two seconds as we look this up. I'll also maximize this since we're going to stick in command line for a while. Not that it really makes any difference, it just kind of puts it all in the left hand corner instead of there in the middle of the screen. Let's see if we can just kind of make it more the the center there. And let's see if we can increase our our font size just so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. We'll bring that up. It's taking a little bit longer than I expected it to for dependencies. Of course, right now I have my wireless off and that's because every time I mess around with wireless it blows up. Now I've created a simple script that I can just type in Wi-Fi and it shuts down of course everything with the network and brings it right back up for me. Makes it easy. Okay, so we're actually using 0 0.97 and I prefer to use that because I don't like the new Grub 2. I, it just seems to be much easier. So if we edit the main Grub file and it's not in a yes, it's in for me it's in boot grub not Greg grub slash grub dot conf now, we'll see here that the default is always the first one because the reason why I set that up and even though Windows 7 is the very first partition or the first entry in here that's because sometimes if Windows requires updates because of its hundreds and hundreds of security packages it'll sometimes tell itself it needs to reboot and it's just easier just to have it so that if the system reboots for some reason it goes into there and finishes up those packages so I, I always have to just make a special effort but most of the time I'm already booted into my Linux now the timeout that's why the timeout equals 45 and the timeout 45 just gives me plenty of opportunity when I reboot to make sure that I haven't missed something Splash image, of course, is looking at hard drive number two because it always starts with zero first as your first hard drive and one is your second. This is looking at the second partition, which would be SDB2, looking in the boot directory under grub and then splash.xpm.gz. And then, of course, right here is how you would install uh, Windows into your grub loader, you know, your title, Windows 7. Uh, root no verify now of course once again hard drive zero partition zero being the very first partition of the first hard drive and chain looter plus one then sends it on its way and then as you see here title gen 2 linux 3107 that's i always try to label it for the kernel version i'm using so it reminds me of what i'm doing and of course once again if you look at your root your hard drive, you're in the second hard drive with the second partition and then of course these are always your special settings the way you like them um, kernel boot you know VM Linux root equals the main root uh, the FS type ext4 splashes for both because I like to see everything come up quiet kinda if there's any type of a uh, a screen that pops up it keeps that gone and also it, it keeps the extra stuff that first boots up from the kernel from showing so that it just shows me everything that Gen 2 is doing show options gives me a chance to change things and of course I always throw the VGA equals 0x31a which gives me the the proper resolution for this computer if for some reason uh, Nouveau drivers do not work proper on this current one I'm not using an init RD setup so I have that commented out of course my second partition we see that it's HD1 comma 2 I still use pretty much the exact same stuff for it because right now it's my testing version of Gen 2 
and my real root of course is set to SDB3 and I'm also not using an art. Now you'll see here for instance this, this weekend I'll be doing updates on my guest OS and I'm using Zorin OS. Now I just update this every week and so this week it's Zorin OS 7 root HD1 comma 3 which translates to the second hard drive fourth partition and you'll notice too that I have these things like boot slash VM Linux and then NetRD slash boot and NetRD and then of course pretty much the same stuff. I, I use pretty unless something comes up with some sort of boot structure that doesn't work then I just use the same thing. Down here of course I've got old distribution titles that I've tried at one time or another. Sometimes they have something special in there. Sometimes they're exactly the same. This one for instance for Magia, I need a boot image equals Linux for some reason. Um, this one here is just read only and gives the VGA command. Yeah, but you know, there's all kinds of different as I use things and I have to use different examples, I sometimes will just leave it down there. Now one thing that I always do in each area is if we go into boot, just to make it easier, I create links like this VM Linux link is pointing to if we do a ls dash lsa you'll see it's pointing to linux dash 310.7 dash gen 2 and that just makes it easier to type in if we were to go ahead and mount dev sdb4 and look at that on the mount guest os and go into the boot there we'll see for instance that they've got a few different kernels because when it first installed it was 38031 after an update it was 32 and so if we do an ls-lsa here to to show that we'll see that the init rd is now pointing to init rd image 38032 the vm linux is pointing to vm linux 38 and that mainly just helps me because i don't have to type out this whole string or this whole string and take the chance of a typo or messing something up so that it doesn't work. It just makes it a lot easier. So whenever I install a new operating system, the first thing I do after it says everything's good, do you want to reboot? I say no. I go into a command line. I go and mount the, um, just like we did there, I mounted the SD4. And then I go into the boot directory of it. And I create my links to that. And then if it's, everything's generic, it should work even without changing the title. I just know that that third option of, of Linux is going to work. You can do this in minutes. It doesn't take long at all. And they all share the same swap file. I personally have never run into any issues with Gen 2 or any of the other flavors of Linux having a problem sharing that same swap file. So I, I thought about that at one time. I thought, you know, it's a temp location. Is it possible that that could have some problems with different OS's utilized in the same area but I've been doing that for years and have not ever run into an issue now someone out there might say oh no that's bad practice you ought not do that but I've not run into an issue by using this configuration it's very simple to set up multiple versions of Linux or even Windows on the same box and be able to bounce back and forth with just a reboot and allow the grub loader to con to monitor everything now with grub I have the master boot record set for the first hard drive which is SDA for grub for gen 2 whenever I install a new Linux OS this is why I, I've mentioned many times I'm so glad that it doesn't just automatically throw out grub and install it because a lot of times it wants to install to the master boot record of the first partition of the first hard drive and that's my that's the one that Gen 2 always uses and I don't like that to work so if you're ever installing an, another flavor of Linux and you want to use that and it gives you the option either saying just don't worry about installing grub just look in the boot area and utilize the the defaults when you're editing your master grub file or if it's forcing you to choose a location to install Grub, let it do it, but always install 
the, the grub information to the partition you're installing to. So for instance, when I installed Zorin, I told it to install to the partition SDB4, and when I did that, no problems, it didn't affect the other grub configuration, and then I just mounted my Gen2 partition within Zorin and edited the grub.conf file to, to set up the different different settings there. And once I did that, and of course created my little shortcut links to VM Linus here and initrd, then rebooted and there I was. I was in and out and working great and having multiple different OS's. Uh, something very simple, very easy to do within Gen2 or any Linux distribution. If your flavor of choice is Debian, um, you can do the exact same thing through that. Uh, or Arch or Slackware, it's universal and that's the great thing that if if all the different versions of Linux are supposed to be the same things like this should be uniform and transparent from distribution to distribution. So this isn't just a Gen 2 tool that you can use, this is an any Linux distribution. It may be a little different using of course Grub 2 because it when you look at the Grub it's not showing you slash dev files like if, if we look at well I don't want to do that because I got some I got some bad practices in my in my FS tab but in my FS tab it always points to slash dev slash SDB1 to, for the swap slash dev slash SBD2 for my root for instance in Gen2 and so forth and so on and you know, when you look at Grub2, it, it actually is showing like a, a hard drive naming convention that's really long, a long string that makes a bunch of garbly goop no sense to me. And I think it's kind of silly and don't like it and prefer to be able just to use what makes much more sense, which is using the slash dev and the hard drive name than, than the other. And, and you can convert it and just change it back to that stuff. But then when you look at the way Grub uses and Grub2, to me it just looks like they've complicated it and made it worse. And I've never had problems with 0 0.97 and the older versions of Grub, so I prefer to stick with that. And that's enough said with that. I don't want to ramble too much about why I don't like the newer versions. The older stuff still just works. Eventually, someday, I might be forced into it, and then I just have to find a better way to, to maintain those files. But until then, this is awesome. Hopefully if you have any questions I can answer them. Feel free to leave a comment. And I'm still looking at trying to set up a few more videos on Gen 2 and Review before I jump into a, a um, install tutorial. And I'm, st and I'm still trying to look at how best to go about that because I know if I put it all together as one big thing it's probably going to take at least an hour and I need to split that up then and I'm not sure if I just want to record everything I'm doing and then cut and paste and put it all back together and then create chapters or lesson number one, two, and three but I'm still trying to figure that all out. But I will remind you too if you're looking for Gen 2 tutorials I have found a few out there already on YouTube that people have done as short as 30 minutes and as long as an hour or more if they're still out there that is. So until next time whether it's morning, noon, evening or night thank you for watching, thank you for your comments thank you for your subscribes and all the rest until next time have a great night and don't get too scared during the Halloween time tomorrow <laughs> Good night